Hello everyone, back to you into today's video. It's January Friday today, so we're going to have a look at the weather for the coming month. This, will, this one will take us to the middle of August, uh, can you believe? So uh, we're going into the final month of the summer, and into the middle of the final month of the summer of the year really is uh, getting on. Uh, now, so we're going to have a look at the Japanese model and the CFSB2 to see what the signals are uh, for the coming month. It's been a funny old summer, uh, this one, with generally quite an unsettled overall weather pattern um, but the uh, south has managed to hang on somehow or other to a lot of warm and dry weather throughout most summer whereas the north Scotland parts of Northern Ireland have had a horrible summer uh, so far and uh, we'll see what the signals are as we go through into the final month of uh, the summer in a moment but before you get on with that just very quick to say about the ads there's links to articles on all pages and guys if you can't have a browse of widgets any articles that you're interested in please click through you can read the article thanks so much for doing that video ads on most of the page they open up with the content and then they close back up again when you've watched them and thanks very much for doing that just say about what's happening at the weekend uh, it'll be the cfs six months look ahead so we'll be going six months ahead just for fun with the CFS, but we'll also have a new uh, El Nino update as well. Uh, the model I was waiting for to update has updated overnight. So uh, we will be looking at the current situation with El Nino in the Pacific Ocean on Sunday and also going forwards to see what is uh, predicted to happen as we go through into the end of the year and into the start of next year in terms of the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean. Right, let's get on. I've very quick to say about last night's thunderstorms. Um, they did occur uh, down across the southeast, really to the north and west of London, and going up into parts of East Anglia. I think that's where we had the worst of uh, the storms, roughly in the same uh, position that was being predicted by the high-resolution WRF model. Uh, I think that came out on top in terms of the model uh, situation for uh, last night's thunderstorm. The Euro 4 again was underestimating uh, the storm potential, but GFS may have gone a little bit uh, over the top with it. So I think the WRF model probably came out the best. But the storms were quite uh, quite severe where they occurred. They are fairly isolated through the northwest of London and up towards East Anglia. They're all gone now, and uh, we're left with this rain across eastern parts of Scotland, and that's clearing away into uh, the North Sea. The main issue, once that's gone, is going to be windy. It's going to be a very windy day across parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, Northern England, particularly southern parts of Scotland and Northern Ireland and Northern England, where we could see gale force winds in uh, one or two places. Of course, in summer, that can be fairly disruptive because the trees are in uh, full leaf, so it doesn't take very much to get uh, get branches blown off them. So uh, watch out for uh, falling branches up in the north this afternoon. Okay, here's the uh, JMA 500 mm height anomaly chart for uh, the coming week, first of all. We'll stretch out through the month with this. So the first week bid will be taking us from the week that we're currently in, the 17th to uh, the 24th of July. As you know, the 500 millibar heights, uh, blue extrapolates to low pressure, yellow extrapolates to high pressure. So what we see for the coming week is that we've got this ridge down to the south of the country, many parts of the Mediterranean. Quite deep low pressure in the Atlantic and going to the north as well, uh, with the jet stream going through rather like that. So it's coming through the country, really, the jet. And uh, it is most unsettled in the north. But even in the south, you could get some unsettled conditions coming through if this. But ridge is relatively close to the south, so should keep the south drier. But uh, I think because the low pressure is generally quite deep in the Atlantic to the north, that could be quite unsettled for all parts of the country. The next weekly period will be taking us from the 24th of July through to the 31st, so right to the last day of the month. And this one's very unsettled, actually. This trough is deepening to the north of the country. There it is. Uh, the jet stream is pushing southwards as well. So uh, that's a deterioration for the end of July, really. That would be turning it really quite unsettled across many parts of the country. We would expect some uh, bouts of rain even to be coming down into the south with that and it's relatively cool uh, as well through that final week of July not a very good uh, week to end the month at all 
And then if we go through to the first two weeks of August, this will take us from the 31st of July through to the 14th of August. Um, a little bit better. The trough is uh, is weakening a bit, but it's still there up to the north of the country. We've got this ridge somewhere over across the eastern parts of Europe. That's a bit, uh, a bit of an odd one. Um, and I think jet stream's still really more or less coming through the country, but it's going a little bit further north. So probably going back to the sort of situation that we've got through the coming week as opposed to the very poor situation that's been indicated for the last week of August. But generally it's a fairly fairly mixed bag, Matt. Uh, and even into the start of August, it looks like staying fairly unsettled. As I say, it has been a really odd summer, this one, because it's been an overall quite an unsettled weather pattern across both parts of the country. But uh, the ridge, the ridging, has stayed very close to the south across France. They've had a hot summer across France. And it's just allowed southern areas to get away uh, with quite quite a dry and warm summer. But it could very, very easily have been a really bad summer across all parts of the country. And it'll be very interesting, I think, once we get to the end of the summer, actually, to compare the statistics in terms of temperature and rainfall from southern parts of England through to, say, uh, central parts of Scotland. Because I think there'll be a big differential across the country from north to south in terms of those temperatures and uh, and rainfall. It looks like that broad sort of uh, pattern is continuing uh, into August as well. Having a look at the CFS V2 again means our 500 millibar heights broken down into week periods. So the first week period again, week back we're in 16th to the 22nd of July. What we find for this one is uh, again the region is all down to the south of the country, the troughs of low pressure up to the north. So total agreement uh, between the CFS uh, V2 and the JMA jet stream coming through something like that. So it's fairly unsettled. The most unsettled conditions in the north. This ridge close to the south does keep southern parts of the country drier. Not totally dry, but drier. And uh, a little bit warmer down there. We go through to the next weekly period. This is going from the 23rd to the 29th of July. This is when the uh, JMA is seeing quite a unsettled spell across all parts of the country. What the CFS wants to do is basically just keep the pattern going uh, with the ridge down to the south, keeping the south mainly dry, fairly warm, again, low pressure up to the north and out in the Atlantic. So uh, something like that with the jet stream means that the north, again, gets the most set of conditions. The south, again, remains with a fair amount of dry weather. And then we go through to the next week period. This takes into the start of August. This goes from the 30th of July through to the 5th of August. And that trough is deepening over Scandinavia. Uh, with the trough pulling out into the central part of the land. So this is in line with the JMA, but it's a week later, uh, if you like. Uh, I think this would be turning unsettled across all parts of the country. The jet stream would be going rather like that. So we're under uh, we're under a trough, and we're on the cool side of the jet there to start August. So that would be uh, pretty dismal, um, pretty dismal condition to start August, to say the least. So I, I think the JMA and the CFS are seeing the same evolution which is for things to, deter to deteriorate across all parts of the country at some point but whether it's the final week of July as we see on the JMA or whether it's the first week of August as we see on uh, that chart the CFS V2 little bit uncertain but overall uh, both models are sort of going in the same uh, direction for the end of July and the start of August but then improvements for the final weekly period this goes from the 6th through to the 12th and then signs that the ridge is starting to come back in off the Atlantic. The jet stream is going uh, a bit like that. So uh, it's still probably relatively cool, actually. Um, but uh, it is turning dry with that ridge coming back in off the Atlantic. And this trough over Scandinavia is uh, weakening as well. But overall, a pretty mixed period uh, coming up again uh, from the CFS V2. The uh, temperature anomalies shape up like this. So for the first week, the week that we're currently in, the model is seeing a cooler than average week across many parts of the country. Though notice how warm it is across much of France and Spain and western uh, parts of the uh, southwest parts of Europe. And there we go, over to Central Europe as well. Most of the continent baking hot, but it wants to keep us in sort of cooler conditions. And that's just because of the jet stream is uh, running through the country. But I think the south probably has the potential for some warm conditions at times because it's just so hot over most parts of the continent. 
As we go through to the next weekly period, again, very similar, uh, really most parts of the continent, again, looking baking hot in those uh, red colours. We, on the other hand, are a little bit cooler uh, than average generally in those green colours. But again, with the south so hot and that ridge relatively close to the south, uh, it will bring warmer conditions into southern parts of the country at times. Very unfair some of this, with the north getting all of the uh, all of the cool conditions of the south, hugging all of the warm uh, conditions. It's unusual to get a summer that's quite as uh, uh, as quite as stark a difference across the country. As that. Now, as we go through to the next weekly period, then all parts of the country have gone significantly cooler than average. And notice then, uh, most parts of the continent are cooling down as well. So it's still a bit warmer than average for Spain. But uh, for many central parts of Europe, look at that, they've actually gone uh, down to average or slightly uh, below average. So a really big change takes place if CFSV2 is correct right at the very end of July. And into the start of August with uh, that heat just draining away from uh, the continent really. And then the final weekly period going from the 6th to the 12th of August looks like this. Again cooler than average. I think it's probably going over the top with the extent of how cool uh, it is. I don't think it'll be quite that bad especially down in the south. But to overall a pretty pretty cool period coming up there and again the heat has gone uh, from most parts of the uh, central Europe and even Spain is uh, cooling down back towards average of course average uh, temperatures in Spain uh, at the start of August going to be very hot anyway um, so it's all relative uh, really to uh, the time of year you're in and what average you're setting it against the rainfall anomaly from the CFS V2 looks like this generally near normal rainfall uh, for the coming week a bit drier than average in the south, a little bit wetter than average up in the north, no great deviation. The next weekly period though, the 23rd to the 29th of July, is going wetter than average here. Um, I'm a little bit surprised about that because that ridge is fairly close to the south on the 500 millibar height anomaly, but uh, there we are, it's seen a wet, uh, a wet end to July coming along in any case. And uh, then it goes through to the next week period, the 30th of July through to the 5th. And this one, I thought it was probably most unsettled. And actually, it's going to near normal rainfall. So the wettest weather is in that final week of July, interestingly. But uh, the most unsettled conditions in terms of the five and a bit of our heights in the first week of August. So that's a little bit odd how it's doing that. I would expect this weekly period, uh, at the start of August, to be the wettest um, of the four weeks. But... Uh, Anyway, that's what the model is showing. Sometimes these uh, rainfall charts are a little bit strange uh, because the model struggles um, more with rainfall as opposed to temperature. All the seasonal models uh, are a bit like that. Um, and then for the next week's period, going up to the 6th to the 12th of August, the bridge is coming back in off the Atlantic, remember, in that week. So uh, it turning, it's turning a little bit drier than average. Of both. You remember the temperatures, still nothing really uh, to write home about. So uh, it all looks a little bit mixed, doesn't it, for the uh, coming month. I've got a feeling for the South it won't be as bad as that is looking. Uh, I think we will keep relatively warm conditions close to the South, although just because we've had this pattern of a North-South split and a very stark North-South split at that, just because we've had that uh, through the summer, doesn't mean it necessarily goes on and on and on into the end of the summer. We may see a pattern change that turns it more unsettled down in the South. But overall, my suspicion is that southern areas will probably stay relatively OK, uh, with at least some drier, warmer conditions at times. But for the North, I'm afraid, it's just really a continuation of what you've had, which is a very, uh, very poor summer so far. It looks like that's going on. Uh, for the coming month generally uh, as well so it's all highly experimental uh, remember these charts are not to be relied upon um, all long range seasonal forecasting is experimental and uh, tomorrow we'll be doing the week care forecast with sort of shorter range tried and tested models so come back for that that's all for now thanks for watching